to play some basketball. You know this is not another video of dribbling the ball and shooting the gong with a Glock. I don't think I did that once, did I? <laughs> you know that objects, most of you, uh, are more, they're better stabilized if they're spinning, correct? Like, you know, most people, when they shoot a basketball, in fact, you know, they, they, the ball is spinning. Although some people shoot kind of a brick and do, do pretty well, you know, without a spin. Uh, but it stabilizes the ball better or an object, you know, for example, it would be really difficult to, to balance a basketball on the end of your finger very long like that. However, if it is spinning, whoa, then if you can get it up there, then it will be stabilized. So it's the spinning motion, gyroscopic effect, I don't know, what's it called? Okay, it, 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 it stabilizes it. It will stay there, okay? Just like the planet, right? So that helps, just like with a Frisbee. Let's get another object here, remember the basketball. You know, if I take a Frisbee and I just kind of throw it like that, was that a wonderful throw? That tells you all I did in college was study. I didn't spend a lot of time throwing frisbee back in the 60s, right? But if I spin the thing, put a little spin on it, it's gonna at least at least it's gonna fly uh, accurately and it's gonna be stabilized. I'll see if I can get that red hanging target there, come close to it. Ooh, I nicked it. I wounded him. Okay. But at least you saw it. It it moved in a stabilized manner, okay, because it's spinning. Well, the same thing, same principle with a bullet. You know, when you've probably heard, some of you, you know, like my, the Brown Best rifle was, is a smooth bore. And when you shoot a ball out of that, it's, it's not totally inaccurate, but it'd be hard to pick off uh, apples over there on the far hill with the thing, you know, even in a vice, because you don't have that rifling effect to stabilize the bullet, to give it that spin as it's leaving, okay? Now, some of you, most of you are aware of this, some of you are not. What we're gonna talk about is twist rate, of course, and some of you, maybe wonder what the heck that's talking about. Okay, I have no clue about that. You know, especially my, my relatives in Kentucky probably don't know what all that's about, right? Well, we're gonna look at this. This is a rifle barrel, and it is rifled. This is out of a 1911. We're gonna try to give you a look down that barrel. It's not easy. I'll try to hold it steady. And even if it's a little blurred or whatever, you can see that there's rifling in there, those grooves. This is a fundamentals thing, of course. Most of you know this quite well, but that is what gives the bullet its spin. You notice uh, how they're cut there. And of course, almost all barrels have that nowadays, other than shotgun barrels. You have rifling like that. I'm not shaking a little bit, but uh, so it doesn't have to tell you probably you've got rifling in there, whatever the barrel is. And it gives the barrel, the bullet rather, that a spin as it launches it. All right, that's why it's stabilized for a long way. You've seen me, hopefully, shoot on this hill, even out to 230 yards with handguns, even short handguns, and the bullets fly very true. They really do. You know, it's just the, the biggest variable is me, the nut behind the, the trigger trying to hold the gun steady. All right, so we thought another way we'd demonstrate this, maybe, uh, twist rate is, and, and some of you have, you understand what we've talked about so far, you know, just fine. But you still wonder, what's twist rate? What's that? You know, I hear people arguing about the best twist rate, especially in an AR barrel, you know, because that seems to be a bigger issue with the AR-15s and that kind of firearm uh, and other firearms. But twist rate, it simply means you'll see uh, stamped on the on the barrel on AR, like uh, one in seven, one in nine, one in eight. What that means is that that bullet will do one complete turn in eight inches or seven inches. So one turn in seven inches, one turn in eight inches. Think about that. The rifling is, the twist of the rifling is either more or less aggressive is what it comes down to. And I found these two bolts, although that's one way to demonstrate it. It's uh, kind of the outside version of it. But for example, the threading on this one, you know, that's a, that's, that, that nut is gonna have to turn, man, I don't know, 20, 30 times to get from there to there, whatever that is, about an inch, inch and a half, see? So that's a very uh, tight, uh, you know, twist rate, okay? Whereas this one, if we had a nut that would fit on that, I'm not sure what that's for. I bought it in a hardware store for you guys. But uh, you see the twist rate of that threading. If I had a nut that would fit on that, that's actually some kind of screw kind of thing, but it would, uh, it would really just turn maybe once or twice from here to here, and they're about the same length, see? 
So if I had a nut, envision that nut actually on here, it would turn maybe once or twice from here to here. So that would be a very slow twist rate, not very fast. Whereas if this thing was threaded all the way back, you know, at that rate, that's a very fast uh, uh, twist rate. This nut would turn, yeah, you guess, I don't know, six, eight, nine times. See, it would actually, so envision a bullet, same thing. You got a, a rifle barrel that has a very fast rate of twist. It's going to spin the bullet faster. You know, and, uh, and you say, okay, well, why is there even a difference? Looks to me like as long as you have rifling and it is, does have a twist rate, gets the bullet turning, spinning as it leaves the muzzle, what else do you need? Well, I'm not an expert on that, but uh, people who probably shoot bench rest and could discuss this at length, but that's not what this is about. Generally speaking, generally speaking, a faster twist rate is what you want for a heavier bullet. Okay, it takes a faster twist rate to stabilize a heavier bullet. That's kind of the generalization there. So a lot of barrels, like, uh, like ARs, what I look for is something kind of in the middle of the road that will stabilize a heavy bullet pretty well, and even a light bullet and do fine with that. You know, so that's kind of what I look for. But uh, that's what that has to do with, mostly. You need a, a faster twist rate. For, for example, if you're target shooting and you want extreme accuracy out of an AR, you're going to shoot those 62 grain or even heavier bullets uh, at long range, maybe you're competing at Camp Perry or something, then you're probably going to find uh, in a gun that's designed for that competition uh, a faster twist rate. Okay, so in other words, that bullet's going to spin more times before it leaves the barrel, so it's going to be better stabilized. All right, and in there are situations where you don't want the bullet all that well stabilized. For example, the AR, the 223 round, 5.56. Five, Part of its effectiveness is based on it not being too overly stable, at least in the 55 grain version, you know, originally. It's putting it gets into the yaw effect of it, and we won't get into all that. But that's what twist rate is. Uh, this is just a basics uh, for folks who, who, who just have wondered about that. It's how many times that bullet spins per inch of travel in the barrel, okay? Fast twist rate, it's going to spin more times. Slow twist rate, it's going to spin fewer times, and maybe not be quite as stable if it's a heavy bullet. So that's what that's all about, the twist rate in a rifle barrel or even a pistol barrel. So hopefully that was helpful to you if you didn't know really what that was all about and I uh, didn't confuse you even further. And all I can say is life is good.